Take three. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Where are you going? We're finally going live. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. This way. There we go. All right. Hey, everybody. This is Brittany, and I'm joined with Lauren today. Yay. <laughs> it is International Tiger Day, and we are going to show you all of the tigers that call Big Cat Rescue home. Thank you for humoring our test runs. We were trying to determine if it's my phone, Facebook, or a combination of the two <laughs> on why I can't Zoom. So sorry, I won't be Zooming. Miss Priya's been hanging in there with us as well. We've been over here for like 10 minutes, just kind of like, just doing techie things, so. She doesn't understand the lack of snacks. <laughs> no. She's like, there's two of you and no food. I don't, I don't get it. But don't let her lie to you. She's already had her full breakfast. Um, so the reason I really, really wanted Lauren here with me today is because Lauren has all the info on all of the conservation projects that we do. And since it is International Tiger Day and we've been fundraising for several weeks now, um, I figured she could help uh, fill you guys in on what it is that we are doing for International Tiger Day and how you guys can help while our guest of honor wanders away <laughs> we'll walk this way maybe we'll see duchess as well so we we do plan to show you all of the tigers that live here at big cat today so hang in there and at the very end i will give you guys a verbal update on summer the rehab bobcat where are you going <laughs> so lauren do you want to tell everybody what our project is this year yep so um, this year we will be supporting the Corbett Foundation, which is a non-profit organization out of India. Um, we have supported them in previous years for different projects. Um, last year we actually supported the Cattle Shed initial initiative. And what that was is basically building more protective um, home bases for livestock. So one of the biggest issues that they have in areas with predators is that predators feed off of livestock. Um, it's easy prey for them, it's prey that they don't necessarily have to hunt, and this is where you get the human-animal conflict between local farmers or local villagers with cats such as you know leopards tigers they have it a lot in india and in, sorry in africa with the lions um, and so by building these protective houses you basically make it harder for the cats to get the livestock and mm -hmm. um, there's a number of organizations that will do livestock compensation so if livestock is killed by predators they will pay for that animal um, and basically the reason that they do this is to try and remove any negativity between locals and the cats. Mm -hmm. Obviously the cats are just doing what is um, natural to them. You know, if they see a goat or a sheep or cows, you know, that to them is food. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not as though they're doing anything wrong, but they just have this overlap as people continue to take over more of the earth and more of the landscapes. Yeah, um, no they kidding. They start running into issues. So um, they provide them with these better housings and they also try and educate the locals as to ways they can kind of help themselves and to mitigate some of those threats to their livestock and protect the big cats. Um, this year we're doing something a little different. So um, out in India, one of the core tiger reserves, and I am probably going to slaughter the name, but <laughs> Bandavgar, I believe. I think you said it, yeah. I've um, been there. Yeah, been there. <laughs> I have um, been there. <laughs> and so uh, one of the common things that they do there is the farmers will dig open wells. Mm -hmm. These are just open wells for water, um, but the wells are ground level, so there's no kind of indication that they're there. Um, and unfortunately, they do become a death trap for not only the big cats, but a variety of other animals. Um, you know, the animals will just be walking around, chasing prey, um, and they will fall into these wells, and then they cannot get out. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, some of the animals end up drowning in there. Um, or they have to be rescued, but obviously rescuing a tiger from a Can well. Can you imagine? Nope. <laughs> a tiger or a leopard from a well, I, a very 
very angry. Oh my Tiger god! Lepido, uh, Probably super scared and super yeah. hungry at that point. Oh, yeah. horrible. Um, so one of the initiatives that Corbett does is they actually go out and put fences around the wells, um, just to kind of form a protective barrier between the animals and the wells. Mm -hmm. um, there are actually 2,500 of these just in the core of the Tiger Reserve. Um, so Colbert is working to try and fence those in. Obviously, a lot of the locals don't have the money or the facilities to do so. Mm -hmm. um, so they go out there and they fence the wells and try and mitigate the threat kind of on the ground. Um, she's done with us. Oh, Let's yeah, go to Duchess. Done. She's, <laughs> she's like, I'm, yeah, she went into her den. It's time to groom. She's like, your stories are boring, boring me. Stories. <laughs> so we, um, actually to date, they have fenced in around 200 of those wells and 56 of them were funded through donations from us. That's amazing. Uh, which is great. So this year we're trying to fence in another 30. And mm -hmm. um, the wells cost around $330 each. Um, so our goal for International Tiger Day this year is $10,000 so we can fund 30 of those wells. Obviously anything additional would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, the more we can do the better. You know, 200 of 2,500 is only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So um, yeah, they're doing a lot of great work out there. Uh, we have different ways that you guys, if you want to help, you can donate online. Um, we also have the International Tiger Day merchandise that you guys can buy and then profits from those sales will go to the project. Nice. And I did put a link to the salsa page for the donations um, here in the description of this video. And then you guys can find the merchandise at bigcatrescue.biz. And we have found with, um, you know, over the years that we've been donating, um, each year we have a budget that we donate to different projects around the world. Um, and we've really tried to put a focus on threat mitigation. Um, you know, it's great to go out there and do the research to find the cats. That is something that is necessary. But if we're not protecting the animals that we know about, then we're not really doing much to save it. Yeah. Um, so any threat mitigation that we can do, any physical items that, you know, we can fund. Um, with the wells, it's something where we can see where our donations are going. We can see the difference that it's making. Um, and obviously we are able to do what we do because of you guys. You know, if, if it wasn't for our donors, if it wasn't for your support, we wouldn't be able to do what we have done the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've actually to date, I think, donated over $500,000. That's so incredible. That makes me yeah. want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. And it's because of you guys we've been able to do that. So thank you very much. If you've already donated for International Tiger Day, um, you know, don't feel guilty that we're still <laughs> doing this fundraiser. You guys have already helped. We really, really appreciate that. Um, just share this video and share this information with others. And we'd really appreciate that. Duchess is done with us too. <laughs> What's up with you guys? <laughs> well, that's fine. So this was Duchess Tiger, um, by the way. And if you guys came in late, you can start this from the beginning at dailybigcat.com. What? What's happening here? Okay, well, we'll walk back this way because we can grab my cart. Okay. We've still got the Guatemala boys that we'll go see. If you guys have any questions about any of the work that we do um, in that area, now is your time to ask because Lauren is our expert here. I, hear that <laughs> but yeah, I think one of the things that, you know, I love most about this program that we have is, you know, obviously our main priority is the cats in our care. Mm -hmm. But if they, if we can use the resources of having them to raise money to help their wild counterparts obviously it's a it's a huge huge bonus it does um you know as much as we hate that these cats are in enclosures we can't release them they can't go back into the wild you know they they have been captive bred um so if we can kind of keep the ones wild wild mm -hmm. then we want to do everything that we can Absolutely. to do that and to save the species um you know obviously we have to protect the environments that they live in we have to protect the ecosystems yeah and um, to be able to protect the cats so, yeah yeah amazing um do you want to tell everybody because i i was trying to write it in all of the descriptions um for the merchandise about the photograph that we used oh <laughs> uh, the 
the tiger phone? Yes, yeah. I loved the fact that you told me, and I was like, ooh, that'll help us sell more because yeah. we have our own Priya. <laughs> so, um, actually, it was a funny coincidence. Um, one of the uh, guys that works for Corbett, I've been going back and forth with him, obviously, to get information about the project, to find out what they need. Um, and really to get some pictures that we could share with you guys of tigers out in the wild that they work with and see on a regular basis. And funnily enough, the picture <laughs> that he sent us was of a tiger named Priya. That's amazing. Uh, so yeah, we had the wild Priya and then we have our Priya. <laughs> so the tiger that is on all of the merchandise, her name is Priya. I love that. Yeah, well, it was, cool. it was very cool because when we went to India, gosh, it's been like four years ago now or something feels like yesterday but it also feels like a hundred years ago um most of the tigers that we ended up seeing in both of the reserves we went to um weren't officially named yet they were just like t94 or t yeah they were just numbers unless they had been there long enough reached adulthood and then started having babies that's when we were learning their names so that was really neat and we ended up seeing a mother with cubs and a grandmother with cubs that was really really amazing and then there were two different males that were named but everybody else was just a tea Numbers. whatever <laughs> well, it's actually very interesting because from a lot of the projects that i've looked at from you know lions tigers all the way down to your smaller cats um, one of the most common things that these organizations have started doing is to actually name the cats. Because mm -hmm. uh, what they find is that if the cats have names, the locals have more of a um, kind of what's the connection like, yeah, or appreciation, a connection, yeah. Or a relationship with totally. Them. Um, you know, and like there's a, a project out in Africa where they actually allow the locals to name the lions. Oh. And by that's cool. allowing the locals to name the lions, it's it's kind of like then that's something for them to they've named it they have to absolutely it. yeah it gives them more of an interest and i just find that fascinating that something so simple as giving them a name yeah you know you see them on camera traps and you can be like oh this is this cat and this is this cat that's um, amazing actually one of the fishing cat projects that we uh, donated to the fishing cat was named sundari oh and i was like oh. it. <laughs> And of course, then I became very invested. I'm in that sure fishing you cat. did. I'm sure you did. <laughs> no, Aww. It's, a, it's a very simple technique that's very effective. That makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, you're you're more likely to throw a rock at a tea whatever yeah. but if you know it's like Simba then yeah. you're like nope yeah. <laughs> I like Simba <laughs> but you know it's like for a lot of our followers that you know they are so invested in our cats but have never been fortunate to, to visit or to see them in person Yeah. but just getting to know their personalities and getting to know like their, their traits it gives you that connection with them and um, <laughs> he straight He's disappeared sick. behind that tree <laughs> He went into his lockout for water. It's water drinking time right now. <laughs> He's just in a feeding lockout. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I love it, that. it's kind of cool. And um, I think one of the things that more and more conservationists are learning that really to be successful, you have to include the locals. Yeah. You have to include people in the area, you know, the villagers, the locals, the farmers, the fishermen. Um, because, you know, you can do everything in your power to help these cats, but if you don't have the support of the people that live there, yeah, you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah, that um, makes perfect sense to me. So a lot, of, a lot of projects now will actually hire locals over external candidates just because they know the area, they know the animals. Yeah, so, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. That's awesome, I love that. Sim, what do you think? Like, I don't know, just on my morning walk. If you guys um, came in late, we did start out with Miss Priya. You guys know Priya was rescued. Um, we actually rescued five tigers at one time from a terrible facility out in Colorado um, that was basically a breeding mill for tigers. And poor Priya was speed bred for years and she came to us with life-threatening um, issues where we actually were doing surgery within 24 hours of her arriving. She's always the cat we wanna tell you to make sure you never ever pay to play with a cub or get your photo taken with a cub. Um, we have Miss Duchess next that we saw. She was uh, a witness protection cat here for over four years. We weren't allowed to talk about her or the cat she came with. Hi, bud, bud. 
You really are Thank such you. a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that didn't yeah, change. we're never going to touch that den. <laughs> Um, and then Mr. Simba here actually came to us with two other male tigers in uh, November of 2019 after, gosh, that felt like two years, years, but yeah, yeah, it was about two years of waiting um, after Guatemala effectively ended using um, exotic animals in their circuses. ADI went in and was able to take down the last circus that kind of went underground and was hiding and they confiscated all the cats. We funded three of them to come here. And, oh, somebody else is on the move, Mr. Max. This is after breakfast time. So this is basically their time of the morning to burn off some energy. In the wild, they would be hunting and mating and raising young and defending territories and leading such a busy life. And unfortunately in captivity because they can never be set free um, in this, type of environment. Um, they've got to get their steps in somehow. I would love to put a Fitbit on one of them and see what they do Yeah, right. <laughs> overnight at least. Well, I know people do that with their dogs. Yes. <laughs> it's like, oh, you've done 30,000 steps today. That, doesn't, that seems wrong. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it would be very interesting to know. Oh, that's a good spot. Oh, no, he's getting up now. He's like, I know both of you. You both give me food. <laughs> so we will show you our circus boys that are living the retirement life. Hi, sweet boy. Can we get a chuff today? Maybe. He's got to defend his territory. He was peacefully laying under his platform till he heard yeah, us. And now he's like, got to protect this, this space. Have you ever noticed how interesting his stripes are in his tail? Mm -hmm. It's so weird to me. Yeah, he almost has like a, a vertical line. Yeah. Of the, yeah. And then it's short mm -hmm. and it doesn't end in a black puff. It ends in white. Yeah, have you noticed that? It's, it's interesting. I wonder if Hi, it's good like, boy. you know how Jasmine doesn't have a full tail? Yeah, I think maybe he lost it yeah. along the way. Hi, oh. bud bud. Because it also doesn't touch the ground. No. So, yeah. yeah, see, it's white on the end. There's no black puff. Oh, wow. Isn't that silly? Yeah, I wonder if So he, unique. I think he probably lost it. Tail. Yeah. Oh, buddy. So interesting, though. He was probably the one that liked his watermelon the most mm -hmm. this year oh, really? out of everybody. Yeah, it was instant gratification, sunk all the claws and all the teeth, and then carried it away very proudly. <laughs> it was very he sweet. <laughs> he, he did. He got it. I have to say I was surprised with Aria. She got the... Uh, yes, I loved your zoomies. footage. <laughs> major zoomies, and she... Uh, it's always such a, a thrill to see these cats have like 10 minutes of just pure joy. Yes. You know, with the watermelons or the turkeys or, you yeah. know. Knowing their backstories yes. and knowing where they've come from. Yeah. yeah, it's it's so important to see them at least have a couple minutes of fun. Are you going to put out a video, a watermelon-ish or pineapple? Um, so or? I put out the pineapples already. Okay. Um, yep, I posted that one already. Uh, I did one of Hutch all by himself because he oh, was a superstar. He deserved his own, um, yeah. Honestly, the footage from that was super awesome because he's real close and you can see him ripping. Look who's... Hi, Hi, you're coming to this side? <laughs> leaves out and then the other one I posted was uh, Flightman Nabisco, Zuccari, Hutch, and... What was the last one? Does? Uh, Yes, Des. Yes, Des yes. was really cute. Hat. hat, yeah. <laughs> His little party hat. It yeah. was so cute. <laughs> oh, actually, I think I saw your, your Aria footage was in, in the, Afton's yeah. video. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, it was, and I also actually just did a video of Aria I posted last Friday. Okay. Um, and I just included it in there with her, so that was kind of a. Do you want to tell everybody the videos you make and where they can find those? Yeah, so um, Afton does all of our kind of 2D flat videos, mm -hmm. um, and then about a year and a half ago, we started doing um, 3D 180 VR videos, um, so it's kind of more of an immersive video, it makes you feel more so like you're with the cat, so you can move the screen around, you can see kind of more of the environment that they're in. 
um, and if you have a oculus headset or any kind of 360 3d headset you can actually see the videos for the true kind of it's awesome true view yeah um, and it really does make you feel like you're there with the cats that they're right in front of you that 3d aspect is awesome um, and we have those posted on our YouTube page, which is 360 Big Cats. Um, or I actually post them every Friday on our main page, so you can see them there as well. Um, and actually, it was Carol that really went with that idea and really, you know, drove it forward and wanted to get involved in it. Um, because her kind of hope is that by giving the public this content to see these big cats up close you know, they're, they're not going to feel the need to go to places that exploit them and, you know, kind of remove that aspect of the interest because, you know, with kids, dinosaurs is what always gets me, you know. Me kids too. Are so I use that all the yeah. time. Yeah. Kids are so fascinated in dinosaurs and mammoths and saber-toothed tigers purely based on videos that they see and purely based on information that they're given but they've never seen one in real life mm -hmm. you know so if we can give people that footage and give people that view without having to go to zoos and without having to go to these roadside facilities and give them that same experience you know hopefully we can get rid of that need for these kinds of facilities that exploit the cats totally um, but actually what carol was talking about which i think would be incredible and i think national geographic actually did get some footage mm -hmm. um is to have cameras like this out in the wild mm -hmm. you know if you could put on a headset and all of a sudden you're transported to mongolia or africa or india and you can look around and see the habitats and see the cats and feel as though you're physically there without the thousands of dollars to get on a flight and physically go. Right, absolutely. Um, so I think they actually did it with a snow leopard. They put a 360 camera out and the snow leopard came right up to the camera, had its face all up in the camera. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, and if we can give people those experiences without the need to travel, I think it would be, be really something. Yeah, um, I, I you know, agree. And also it lessens the footprint in the habitats of these animals with less people needing to go there yeah yeah i agree because that that is something that as amazing as the trip to india was it was disheartening to see how many trucks and vehicles mm -hmm. would rush as soon as there was yeah. a sighting and you've got moms with babies yeah. and and they're just very yeah. confused and now kana wasn't like that but the one that I can't pronounce that you actually <laughs> pronounced quite well. It felt that way too. They had yeah. bigger vehicles and more people going daily. And so I, I agree. I think if we can get that footage to people we and can give them the same kind of feeling. Yeah. yeah. Um, cause I know in Sri Lanka, when I went um, a couple of years ago for the small cat summit, you know, obviously it was an experience of a lifetime to see elephants in the wild, to see elephants in the wild, but it was the same thing. You know, the minute a radio call comes in that there's a leopard, there's 30, 40 four wheelers and jeeps racing to the to the site. Yeah. It's so loud. Yeah. And everybody's shouting at everybody trying to get yep. close to you, and you just see the animals be like, "Yeah, no bite." Yeah, exactly. And, you know, one one of the the incredible things we actually saw was a, a herd of elephants with a baby. Oh. And the minute people started to arrive, they actually ushered the baby away because they just it's yeah too, too much. Yeah. So, you, you know, and I, I understand why people want to see these animals in the wild, mm -hmm. but I also feel like we need to find an alternative that's better for the animals. Yeah, yeah, um, and the environment, because those trucks are, are just yeah. idling, yeah. like putting fumes into mm -hmm. the, yeah, I totally agree. So, yeah, that, that's kind of the mindset that we have, and check out those videos you can also buy super inexpensive they're like 3d cardboard headsets i think we actually sell them on our website yeah we i think we've still got some yeah um, big cat rescue dot biz and that's a really simple way that you can actually just take your phone and then when you go on youtube um it will give you like a little symbol in the bottom right hand corner when you click on the video that looks like a headset mm -hmm. and if you click that it splits the screen and then you can insert your phone into the cardboard headset and actually watch the 3D videos through that. Yeah. So you don't even have to invest in, you know, a two, three hundred dollar headset. You can do it fairly inexpensively. I think ours are literally five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so. And honestly, it's, it's a really cool experience. Um, I will say the first couple times it was a little disorienting. To me. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And 
you know, like it, it, you do have to be sitting because <laughs> yeah. you don't want to get nauseous and like fall over. Right. But um, yeah, it's a really cool experience. And um, actually one of our research partners out in Peru um, sent us some footage of them uh, radio coloring pampas cats. Oh, so I we have a video it. of that app that you guys can see. I love trying that. to get trying to get more more researchers and conservationists to send us footage. So definitely, you guys don't even understand. Every time Lauren says something in a staff meeting, it's always so magical. <laughs> it's like this organization's doing this, and they sent me this adorable photo, and like it's just amazing. Like it's amazing what um, you guys have helped us accomplish. Yeah, and honestly, like there are cats that. Even I never knew existed. Yeah. Like, people will contact us and be like, oh, I'm working with the Bornean Bay Cat. And I'm like, what? What is no, that? What do you want now? <laughs> and then I Google it and I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great That's great amazing. Day. All right, we're one of Lauren's favorite babies. This yeah. is Jasmine. Hi, lady. Hi, sweet girl. You were very chasey this morning. It was fun. But if you guys actually go to bigcatrescue.org slash in situ, I-N-S-I-T-U, you can see all of the projects that we have supported previously. Um, there's also an interactive world map where you can click on different little pins um, and it'll tell you, you know, what species, what organization and how much we've donated and what the donation was for. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to be obviously very transparent and share everything with you guys as to where our money is spent. Um, last year we were very fortunate between you know different fundraisers, the virtual walkabout. Um, I think we donated one hundred thirty thousand dollars, which yeah. was awesome. It's incredible considering we closed to yeah. the public and yeah. we were so concerned. We we lost over half of our staff, our paid staff. Um, so those of us left behind feel a, a great burden, yes. um, but to, in a good way, because yeah. we're just, we're going to keep fighting as hard as we can and make sure you guys don't lose your connection with our cats, but yeah. also to make sure you don't lose uh, the knowledge and the connection with what we're doing in the wild. Well, and I think one thing that is important that we've kind of tried to focus on as well the past couple of years is... You know, everybody knows about the big cats. Everybody knows the tigers, the lions, the leopards, the, you know, snow leopards. And 99% of conservation funding goes to those species. 1% mm -hmm. um, goes to the small cats. So, you know, it's, we've really tried to balance our funding between, obviously we still want to support the tigers because you know we have a connection with them and we still want to help them mm -hmm. um, but we also try and give a fair portion to those smaller cat species um, so that we can help them out they're just as important you know <laughs> ecosystems require multiple species not just the big guys yeah so, absolutely um, yeah it's, it's it's been a really fun couple of years um, but I do always find it very ironic that everybody else here is like we're trying to raise money and I'm like, I'm spending money. I, know. I always say that my job is Pays to support job. your yeah, job. Pretty yeah. Much, pretty much. <laughs> but I love that. I mean, I, I, I get a thrill out of making sure that we not only can fund our own cats, but seeing what it is you're able to do with the rest of the funds. Absolutely. <laughs> such a baby. She is such a baby. Sucking on her thumb. <laughs> And then she just sits there. Sapphire used to do that too. She'd just like keep her foot in her yeah. mouth and just sit there. <laughs> Shere Khan used to do it. Our biggest like yeah. 750 pound cat. You'd look over and he's like, don't look at me. Just uh, suck in my thumb. And you're just like, oh, okay. Big scary cat. Big <laughs> babies. That's hilarious. But um, no, it's been really awesome as well getting to know all of the researchers and conservationists out there. Yeah, you, know. you should tell them a little bit more about your small cat summit because I, I loved on Instagram. I was like eating that up every time somebody <laughs> posts that. what you guys are doing. And um, yeah. so we actually, um, well, I went in December of 2019 before COVID happened. Uh -huh. um, I went out to Sri Lanka to a small cat summit, um, which was basically a meeting of small cat conservationists from around the world. 
um, they'd had one a couple of years prior in England and they were actually, which I'm really sad I missed. Yeah, then, no kidding. Uh, like, <laughs> Home I turf. Know. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, they actually were hoping to have one this year in Singapore, I believe. Oh, that would have been cool. Because of COVID, it all got shut down. Yeah. Um, but basically it was just different researchers from different species um, that got together to present their work and talk about what they were doing, talk about their funding needs, um, you know, talk about issues that they'd had with other people of like minds. You know, for a lot of these researchers, they work in the middle of nowhere, mm. they're alone, or they're with, you know, a few other people. Um, so it was really great to see them connect and talk about, you know, hey, I've had this issue and somebody else would be like, oh, I had this same issue and I solved it this way. Right. Um, you know, and they all kind of got to bounce ideas off of each other. Um, and as a, as a donor, I guess, um, it was great for us to meet the researchers in person. You know, these are people that we have just talked with via email for six months a year mm -hmm. um, so to meet them in person and really get to learn about them as individuals and why they do what they do was really incredible yeah um but one of the newest things that they're trying to do is create um small cat working groups so basically uh researchers and conservationists that work on the same species are now creating like these little groups where they have one source of funding that they work on and then they distribute it between all the different projects. Mm -hmm. And so there's one in India that's very successful with the fishing cats. Um, and they also work with researchers in Sri Lanka and in uh, Cambodia. And, you know, they all get together and discuss their findings and see if differences with the species in different habitats, you know, or find differences with the species or similarities or common ground um, and then I'm just speaking with a lady down in Brazil um, who well Brazil and Peru and Paraguay and all that mm -hmm. you know, South America um, she is starting up a working group for now I can't remember what it's for. That's really cool. Mind blank. Um, oh, Geoffrey Cat. There, there we go. go. So many species. So much information. Um, so they are starting a Geoffrey Cat working group. Um, that's cool. So yeah, that's we had a Geoffrey Cat. We did. Him. Yeah, we I didn't did. get to meet that one. Nico. Yeah. She's very little black cat but um by the way that's aria in the background i know people are asking who's calling it's not nikita it's aria she's yelling because <laughs> i guess we should head over there <laughs> um, but yeah they have a working group for palace cats they have one for black footed cats i love palace cats um, so much so yeah the conservationists and researchers are trying to team together to get the most out of their work and kind of help each other which i think is a great idea mm -hmm. you know it's always easier to do things with a team than solo so absolutely yeah so yeah it's been great over the past couple of years seeing them expand and seeing the great stuff that they're coming up with and doing so um. <laughs> and she's just sitting there smiling she's, she's like, like what that, that wasn't, wasn't me i wasn't doing anything <laughs> What were you hollering for, most smiley girl? <laughs> well, I can see you and I can hear you, but nobody was paying me attention. We'll come closer to that hey. smiley face. <laughs> she does have the best smile. She really does. You have the best Hello. smile. You got the best smile. Good morning. Sweet lady. Hey, sweet girl. <laughs> I think that I maybe filled you guys in on this. If not, um, recently you can see that some of her wounds have gotten bright red and pink again. So we have started her on another round of medications. She's also on a spray and it's been interesting. Every time one of the keepers, one of the meds keepers uses it, they all seem to have different stories. Oh really? Like um, Marie said the first time she sprayed her, she showed all of her non teeth. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know Aria had that in her. And then I think Dylan said she did that to him as well. But for me, she just laid down. I could have sprayed her all day long. Yeah. Like she could have cared less. And then somebody else said. Well, Tuesday when I did it, I fed her in lockout. And then kind of that gave me a closer aim. Yeah. And she just swatted her tail like it was flies. Oh, like she okay. She eating. She did like a little grumble, but 
My guess is that was more so because she was eating, eating and I yeah. was right there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then she got the super zoomies afterwards and was running around. <laughs> well, I laughed because Nisha said when she did it that Aria immediately got up and went and laid in the pool. <laughs> so she basically washed, it, washed it right off. I was like, oh boy. So everybody's having different um, silly experiences with Aria. Yay. I know. Yes. Best chuff. Best chuff. I feel like that's the same with all the cats. Uh -huh. Some people be like, oh, I never have trouble. And you're like, oh, yep. okay, well. The fact that Tut will eat red off a stick for Catherine is like mind blowing to me because yeah. I'm just like, no, Marie literally has to take 15 different yeah. types of meat over there. It is like she creates like a tiny buffet with <laughs> all the different trays. I Aria know. It's typically very easy unless she's in heat. And yes. Then she's, she's been getting that spot in her ear lately. And <laughs> she rubs that ear, she gets a, the kicky foot. Oh boy. So Aria was actually another um, cat that came to us as part of a witness protection program. Her litigation lasted far less time. Um, in my mind, it's probably because the evidence of her abuse was so intense yeah. that there's no way that anybody could have argued that she did not need to go back to that home. Um, so she did get to stay here. We got to announce her at the end of 2019 too, I believe. So if you guys don't know any of the background stories for any of our tigers and you are interested, you can find all of those on our website bigcatrescue.org backslash cat bio what are you doing how come you're not hanging with miss mandy she says people. yeah you're here. Hey, lady. but she came to us with such big gaping wounds on both shoulders and both hips covered in scars she basically doesn't have like any teeth in her mouth um, she needed four root canals. She had to have been in so much pain while she was eating. And she was in such bad shape that Dr. Justin wasn't even sure he could do anything to save her. Um, multiple surgeries and dental procedures later, she's, she's a brilliant tiger. She's amazing. Um, she's given all of us such light in our lives. But unfortunately, those wounds are still so yucky that yeah. it's what, like every three to six months she yeah, seems she to get some, irritated some kind of antibiotic or yeah I mean thankfully she's a good sport about it yeah and she she doesn't give us any issue for the most part mm -mm. but I think she knows that we're just trying to help her I think so too yeah I would say probably the most emotional thing other than being in her very first procedure ever was the day we put her outside mm -hmm. in the grass yeah. Um, watching her walk on grass for probably the first time in her whole life, and she's probably somewhere in her teens, um, was just absolutely amazing. And I've loved seeing her, her little relationship develop with a man. Oh, it's so sweet. It's like the two old ladies having lunch. Yeah. You drive past and they're <laughs> laying up. I always say they have a sewing circle. They do. <laughs> Afternoon tea. Yes. Um, I'm a f hopefully we can see Kali. We might have missed her. She's in our two and a half acre vacation rotation. And if she's not still in the roof section, she's probably all the way out in the middle den. She's 21 years old now and she's just like, I don't play those games no more. <laughs> I used to trot over to you, but <laughs> if not, we'll try to find Mandy and we'll end there. Tuesday, we had to get her in the roof section, and she just stared at us <laughs> in the den, like, can I help you? Yeah, she's like, calling her no thanks. food, and she's like, mm-hmm, that's nice. She's like, I already got locked in one whole day because you wanted to mow, and when I first got here, it was flooded. Her her Airbnb review this time is going to be terrible. <laughs> but you guys, I think that camera is functioning, so you should be able to watch Kali at bigcatcams.com. Because I'm guessing she's already way out there. But luckily, she's my favorite, so I show her all the time. So you guys can pretty much watch most of my lives, and you'll at least catch a glimpse of Miss Kali. So we'll go end with Amanda, our appropriate finale. Please stay there, though. We don't have food. Just a camera. Amanda's 25 years old. So suspicious. She is. She's like, what is... Hi. Girl, what are these morning. people doing? 
What are these people doing? Hi, Mandy. Happy International Tiger Day, lady. So we've kind of come full circle. Priya was the first cat we looked at this morning. Um, born into the pet trade, cub petting, private ownership industry. And that is the same story that Miss Amanda here has. She's 25 year old lady now though. Look at that face. The She's the best. So we did actually show every single tiger minus Kali because we missed her. She's like, mm -mm, I'm on vacation. I'm not waiting for you guys. <laughs> And if you missed any of the amazing information from Lauren, you guys can rewatch this whole live. Oh. Are you gonna flop? Oh boy. Oh boy. You can go to dailybigcat.com for that. And I did promise you that I would give you an update at the end for Summer Bobcat, so I will do that real quick. Um, if you guys recall, about eight days ago, about two and a half week old, roughly, Bobcat Kitten was brought to us um, in very, very bad condition, very weak, very lethargic, not able to walk. First couple of days, she was nursing and eating pretty well. Um, and then we did start her on some antiviral medications in which that caused her to completely lose her appetite. Um, she also was not going to the bathroom. She finally started going to the bathroom and now we kind of have the opposite problem at the moment. She does have some vomiting and diarrhea going. She's back to being a little bit weak and lethargic. She's in Jamie's 24 hour care now. Um, she's receiving medications for anti-vomiting and anti-diarrheals. She is getting sub-Q fluids twice a day. She's getting a mixture of Pedialyte and formula. Um, she's less resistant to it, but she's still not eating it on her own. She is, however, drinking water on her own, and she's actually still pretty perky, all things considered. Um, she's still bright-eyed. She's still, her tail does not stop twitching and moving. Um, she's climbing on things. She enjoys watching herself in the mirror. Um, so we are hopeful, but we are also still being very cautious. Um, so not too much more to report. We did send out a fecal sample. She is um, still on her dewormers. So that's kind of the update that I got first thing this morning. Um, so we will try to keep you in the loop, but just keep sending those positive vibes for her. Everybody else out in rehab is doing really well, so no new updates there. And just a big thank you to everybody who might have donated today. Anybody who already donated for International Tiger Day or purchased the merchandise. Um, that merchandise will only be available until August 7th. So we're going to let it run for one week after. Flop! <laughs> She's like, oh no, only one more week to get your merchandise, people. <laughs> And you can do that at bigcatrescue.biz. And then um, in the description of this video, once this closes down, you can go to our salsa page if you are still interested in donating towards um, building the fences for the wells this year. Help out the Corbett Foundation. And a huge thank you to Lauren. I, I need like a special guest speaker all the time. <laughs> this was awesome. <laughs> I feel like people would get bored if we talk. <laughs> I don't see how they could. If they're here to love animals, they would yeah, love what you're saying. <laughs> but no, definitely, um, if you guys are interested in what's going out there in the world with cat stuff, um, go ahead and check out that in situ page. Um, it has a lot of the different organizations that we've supported. You can go and you know follow them directly on Facebook or Instagram. A lot of them do have social media. Um, and it's really cool to see what they're getting up to. Mm -hmm. um, I know just a couple weeks ago we shared a video of some baby fishing cats, mm -hmm. which I think just about broke the internet. Yeah. Um, that was from one of our partners, uh, The Fishing Cat Project. Um, they post a lot of cool stuff, um, so it's really great to see the cats out in their natural habitat and doing what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. and, um, is your patience waning with us? She's like, all right, I thought you'd be done and le leaving by now. <laughs> but no, thank you guys so much for, for joining. And as Brittany said, everybody that donated, um, 
you guys allow me to do my job, which is <laughs> awesome. Um, and uh, is. yeah, we're very grateful for all of you. Yes, thank you guys so much. Again, if you missed any part of this, rewatch it at dailybigcat.com. Make sure you share this so that that link to our uh, fundraising page goes out into the world and takes over on this International Tiger Day. So thank you guys. Um, yep, aw, all done. You. All done. You're such a good spokeswoman. <laughs>